Well, what an amazing year it's been for me. My first year hosting Trout Unlimited on the rise. I got to travel the country, watch big rainbows jump on big gaudy dry flies. Another beautiful fish, Chris. Hopper eating. Nice. Not even fishing in there. Big old brownies chasing streamers like this. I'm telling you, I didn't come to the bat and kill thinking I was gonna get a brownie like that. You know, more importantly, I got to meet a lot of incredible people and find out what they were doing along with Trout Unlimited to help keep these fisheries intact. In the 10 years I've been working for Trout Unlimited, I've run across very few game changers for the health of Pacific salmon. And we're on the brink of a game changer here in the Klamath. When you put a root rod in the stream and a day later you see a trout under it, yeah. you build it, they come. See, this is a type of fish that four years ago, five years ago, we didn't catch many of those up here. I mean, just in the last few years since they had dam removal, we're seeing more of these guys, which is a nice bonus. It's a great fish to have. Stick with us as we take a look back at some of my most memorable moments hosting Trout Unlimited on the rise in 2011. Two thousand and eleven began with some eye-opening experiences for me. Having not spent a great deal of time fishing the eastern United States, I really wasn't sure what to expect. But after visiting places such as the Upper Connecticut River right. and Vermont's Battenkill, I soon realized this region is filled with waters as wild and varied as any I had previously fished. And as if this wasn't enough to enlighten me, I also explored the remote northern waters of Maine filled with wild native brook trout via float plane. And I got to do it with someone who knows it as well as anyone. Why is northern Maine and the brook trout that inhabit it so special to you? Well, it's the last best place when you're talking about brook trout in the United States. Probably more than 90% of the intact populations of brook trout in the United States are here in Maine. And they're concentrated in the North Woods and in the Western Mountains. Where we've been in the, over the last two days is really, really special because you've got hundreds of waters that have never been stocked. You've got native brook trout in them. You've got hundreds more waters that have perhaps some history of stocking but haven't been stocked for 25 years or more. And so they're really very self-sustaining wild fisheries. Oh. So this is a very, very special place. Oh, that's a good fish. There we go. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. Come here, hon. Maybe we can... Maybe we can get you to come in before you realize that you're hooked. That's a big fish. Let's try not to hold it. That's a stone fly, too. Yep. <laughs> there you go. Oh, man. Look That's at that. That's the one we were fish. looking for. Holy cow. What a. She's a beauty. Oh, yeah. Northern Maine. Nice fish. Whew. Beautiful. Just absolutely no scars. So clean. Awesome. Give her a drink and I'll let you unbutton her if you want. And Absolutely. Hook pretty solid. She wasn't going anywhere, was she? Get that out of your way. Wow. Look at that. Beautiful. Whew. Absolutely awesome. Yeah. Goes. Thank nice you, sir. Work. There That's, we go. It's what we came to see, but you know, you, you hope, but you never That's know right. for sure, right? <laughs> Charles, what is the biggest threat to the wild brook trout here in northern Maine? The biggest threat would probably be uh, neglect by the larger public and conservation community. I mean, there's just so much that can be done to conserve the lands up here, um, to educate the public about the threat of invasive species. You know, nationwide, um, cold water fisheries are really under siege from the impacts of climate change, warming water, you know, very inconsistent weather with, um, you know, microbursts and floods, drought, and all the um, 
the hydrologic impacts, the changes in the hydrologic cycle that accompany climate change are really, really uh, becoming evident. But here in Maine, uh, you have the opportunity to have something of a refuge for an intact population. Certainly climate change will be a factor, but this is a place where we um, can look at having healthy brook trout populations. Nice, Charles. For a long, long time to come if we take care of them. No, oh, it's a brookie. It's a nice brookie. It didn't take long. How does that compare with the rest of the eastern United States and the original brook trout habitat? You know, in Maine, the priority with brook trout is protect intact populations. Practically everywhere else, it is restore populations that have been lost. There are pockets of, you know, healthy brook trout in some limited areas, but, you know, what you have here is you've got a landscape of healthy populations. Beautiful. There you've got isolated populations where you could have a forest fire, a drought, you could have a catastrophic flood and you would wipe them out. Here you've got lots and lots of building blocks to make sure that the house is uh, is strong. Nice Ooh, work. There we go. Okay, Flopping your turn. Yeah, I don't know. Next. I, I, I mean, that was one cast. You gotta take a couple more. Ha! There's no pressure. We gotta right? make sure it's not a fluke. All right, all right. <laughs>